Okay, good morning, good morning. We have my slides. A very, very long time ago, three weeks ago, April 17th, several million people in the U.S. tried to do something online, and they failed. Anybody have any idea what I'm talking about? Taxes, taxes. They tried to file their taxes. Something as simple as filing taxes online. Several million people went at the same time, and they failed. And what did the government do? The government gave us a break. They said, we're going to give you an extra day. You can file your taxes on April 18th. Like, how often does that happen? Now, this is not a new problem for government. Government has had a technology issue. They've had a technology problem for a while. Remember healthcare.gov? The first day healthcare.gov was online, it was an epic failure. People couldn't get their health care. It was a really big problem. So you look at technology platforms across government, especially in the tax world, and many of the platforms date back to when John F. Kennedy was president. Like, that's unbelievable. 60 years old technology platforms. There is a major problem in the world. But is that really the issue? We're seeing governments of all sizes are conducting efforts to modernize their technology platforms. And many of them are doing it across taxes, really important to them. And we're trying to figure out why. They're saying that, well, they have failures like the website, and that's an issue. But is that really what's going on? I think something else is happening. I want to tell you a story about, I got a call from the Commissioner of Revenue of one of the biggest states in the US. Uh, it wasn't that long ago. And the Commissioner said, I want you to come in and we're going to talk about the biggest issues to us. We're the tax authority. What are the biggest problems that we have? Bring your smartest people. So we had a few weeks to prepare. We got them together. And we tried to figure out, well, what do, what do they want to talk about? We work with the biggest companies in the world. We know the corporate tax problems that they were facing. We had that nailed. And we went to the meeting. And we were excited to talk about what the government problems were. And they said, these are our top three biggest problems. Number one, illegal cigarette taxes. Like, are you kidding me? Counterfeit cigarettes. Nobody pays taxes on it. OK, didn't see that one coming. What about number two, stolen identities, filing false tax returns, stealing people's revenue. That actually, we kind of we saw that one coming. The last one, which really blew us away, is that our biggest problem is the zapper. The zapper. Anybody have any idea what a zapper is? It's a little electronic device that goes on the side of a cash register, and it forgets certain things, like transactions. So when it forgets a transaction, what happens? You don't pay taxes on it. That's it. Those are the three biggest problems to government, was illegal cigarettes and stolen identity and zappers. And it woke a lot of us up. There are big problems that government is facing. What do those three things have in common? They're all illicit fraudulent tax fraud. And I think that's what's behind these massive governments in the world are trying to modernize their, their tax technology platforms because they're worried about tax fraud. Why are we talking about tax fraud so early in the day today, I realize? Like, they put the tax guy on, number two, is not the best time to be talking about taxes. But we're talking about it because it's a $3 trillion a year problem. That's with the T. Trillion dollars, three trillion dollars. How big is three trillion dollars? Five percent of global GDP is lost because of tax fraud. Half a billion dollar problem with the US government, three trillion dollars across the globe. And you can see the types of where it happens, and there's individuals tax fraud, and there's business tax fraud. The biggest area is that people sometimes just make up fraudulent transactions and take a deduction for it. Like that's a big problem. And so governments are, are faced with this, and they're trying to figure out, how do we combat this? And they have these complicated systems of creating electronic invoices, and we share it with the government first, and the government agrees with my invoice, and then I can send it to, the, to my customer. Like, really? This is 2018. That's what has to happen to fight tax fraud? It's unbelievably complicated, and it's begging for some better answer in the world. I think blockchain is the answer to this massive tax fraud problem. What are the benefits of blockchain for government? That it'll bring taxpayers into the formal economy. We know that will happen. Frankly, it just takes third parties out of the system. It takes care of the intermediaries. We talked about tax fraud and creating greater transparency. All of this we've seen before. Even helping governments contract better. It's a massive opportunity. 
So we look at across government, how are governments thinking about blockchain? It's not just in the tax world. We look at governments like Dubai. Dubai is using blockchain to manage all visa applications. It makes sense, it's a controlled environment and it's working. The government of Estonia is using it actually for people of voting, people vote with blockchain. And it solves enormity of problems in the world of voting irregularities all through a blockchain. They're starting to experiment with taxes, managing VAT and other platforms. Even in Estonia, they manage all their health records on it. So we know that this is, that this is gonna solve some problems. Okay, back to taxes. So I think it can not only help from a tax fraud perspective, but it can also, just helping in the calculation. I came through in the uh, state tax and indirect tax world uh, in my profession, and there's taxes on a high volume of transactions, indirect taxes, sales tax, VAT, customs duties, excise taxes. It gets really complicated, it's a high volume, and the pace never ends. Blockchain and the way the taxes are calculated can be a real answer here. But what is the role of government? As, the, as government maintains these benefits, and government realizes the benefits of blockchain, I think there's also an obligation. I think government has an obligation to regulate. What about these data privacy rules? Perhaps there's a gate that we need to go through, the data privacy security gate, before we even talk about the benefits of this great technology. What role does government have in regulating this technology? What role does government have, and is there an opportunity for government to promote this, this technology? I came back from a day in Montreal and saw an unbelievable ecosystem that has developed around artificial intelligence. And when you trace that back and understand how did that happen, one of the big reasons is that did you know, if you want to set up an AI research lab in Montreal, the government will pay half of your costs. And they'll do that through tax incentives. Taxes can do some good in the world. I think that's really important. I think government has a role to play, not only in regulating it to achieve these benefits, government should help regulate it, and they can also help us promote the development through tax incentives, and who knows, maybe even achieve some good. Thank you very much.